On today's episode of Hustle & Pro, we sit down with Booker Woodfox. Booker has been a collegiate athlete. He's been a player professionally in the NBA G League here in Frisco for the Texas Legends. He's also the voice of the Legends as a color commentator, and then some. We're going to learn about that, but we're going to start off with a few quick hits to get to know you a little bit better. First of all, welcome, Booker. Thanks for sitting down with us. No problem. Glad to be here. Here's a few quick hits to see, um, to get to know you. Who is your favorite all-time athlete? I'm gonna have to go with I'm gonna have to go with LeBron. You know, um, he's done so much for the game, and he does now. You know, now that he's getting older, you know, I, you know, people kind of take shots at him now, or because he's made some decisions that benefits him. But you know, LeBron's done done so much for the NBA. And you know he's a good dad. You can see that. Like they, some people just you know don't even focus on that. They just focus on the basketball part. But um, you know, all off and on and off the court, that's that's my guy. Who's your favorite all-time team? Hmm, that's a good one. See, you know, I'm I'm Mavs all day, and but wherever LeBron goes, I. <laughs> You know, you follow? I, I follow him, so if he goes to whatever team, then that's what I like. But, you know, I'm Mavs all day long. go to all the games um, when I can. You know, obviously working with the legends, so Dallas Mavs. What's your favorite sport to watch? I, I like basketball, but I also like, I'm starting, I like tennis, you know. Um, I, I've I've got to... I've got to watch a little bit of it growing up, and and I see how that you got to be so quick and athletic. People don't understand that how quick and athletic you got to be for tennis. Yeah, like, you're right. So I got a lot of respect for those people that can play that. And just, I mean, the ball's coming at you like a hundred and something miles an hour, and you got to react. That grew on me, so I kind of like that. What about your favorite sport to play? Uh, I'm guessing basketball. Yeah, but you're a player, well, obviously but basketball, you never but. Know. Um. Actually, we play we play ping pong in here sometimes. I like I like ping pong, and you know I played baseball a little bit, so I might go to the batting cages here and there. But was, you know, basketball. What's the farthest you've ever traveled to play sports or to watch someone play sports? Jeez, Asia. I went all. I played um, in two thousand ten. Before I was, because uh, the year after I was drafted to the Legends, but in 2010 I, um, I think that yeah I played in Lebanon, and that was that was an experience. I mean, see some of the it's a different country and it's and you know there's some stuff going on over there. So you got to be you got to be on your tiptoes, but. You know, I grew up there. You know, I, I became a man. I was there for like five months, and you know where you live at is a little dangerous. You know, and the, but you know the pay is great, but you you gotta you gotta be on your tiptoes. You grow up a lot there. You Absolutely. Said. Yeah. Let's start talking about the legends. Um, we're about to celebrate ten years this upcoming season, and I want you to tell me about your path to the legends. So I was here when the legend started it off. Uh, I think that was 2011. I think yeah, 2011 when the legends first started, and we had Nancy Lieberman and as our head coach. And, and boy, did she do a good job, though. I mean, we got to the playoffs, and she, we we you know we dealt with a lot of things, but we you know that was that was one of my favorite years because. You know, obviously it being the first year, but then some of the players we had, we had like seven NBA first round draft picks, and you know we was, we you know we was just we was really good, and and I got to contribute, you know, which was a was a was a great thing. But it was that my, that that first year was really good. It was special. And how long were you here as a player? Uh, I want to say, did I play five years? Was it five? So. I think it was five. Um, my first year was with Nancy. Second year was with Dale. Two years with with uh, Eduardo Nahara. So mm-hmm. maybe it was four. Then did you immediately transition and stay in on the broadcast side, or tell me how that worked? 
um, and how long you've been doing the color commentating side? Well, actually, this was this year. This season was my first season doing the uh, broadcast. But it was, um, you know, I had talked with Malcolm, you know, in the past about doing some broadcasting, and uh, and at first I was like, ah, uh, you know, it's a little different for me. I'm used to being out there playing, or you know. But we 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 talked about it, and and it ended up being real special. You know, we um, uh, doing it with, alongside Jared Sandler. The first game I did, he, you know, he had my back. Like it was crazy how, if I was, if I had something wrong or I didn't know what to say, boom, Jared Sandler pops in and just takes over. So after, after, you know, being with him, then I picked it up easy and it was a breeze. And we actually had a lot of fun doing it. Had you ever been interested in that that part of, I mean, broadcast or anything like that before, like when uh, you were younger or in school or anything? I never even knew anything about. Uh, analyst, TV broadcast, I had no idea about that stuff. I just, right whenever Malcolm asked me about doing it, I, I went to Google and started looking some things up or, uh, you know, looking at some of the NBA guys that do it with the, you know, as a, on the pro mm -hmm. pro level, like, and, um, like, uh, Chris Webber, he does some, he does analysts and those guys, and I looked at what they talk about, and it and it became easy. You just gotta, you just gotta watch the game, and then mm -hmm. when you just, and you just gotta be able to talk about it, and you know, and, and so it was a, it was kind of easy. Do you find, um, like, how do you prepare for those things? Do you, do you just roll with it? I mean, obviously, you kind of went in blind the first season and everything, and like you said, Jared helped you, but now that you have that under your belt, are you preparing and? Like really, are you overthinking everything, or do you just watch and talk? You just, you know, you just watch and talk, and you, 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 you got to be, you got to be quick though. You know, if when something, when a play breaks down, or or something, a special play happens, you just got to be able to talk about it. You know, and before the next play is about to start. So, you know, after a while, I, I picked it up pretty quick, and and you know, things was just moving. It was easy. How many games are you doing a year then? Games are there? I want to say this season, I, I, I think I did 11 games this season, and uh, and I'm not sure what, what the what the plan is for next year. Probably do a few more, but um, you know, after like I said, after after doing the first two or three games, it was a walk in the park. We was you you know, cause you just got to be yourself, at, yeah. You know, basically, and then it becomes fun. Then it becomes fun, and it becomes. Is you it know, just simple. you and Jared in there? Yeah, it was just on, me and Jared on there. So is he like play by play in yeah. your color, mm -hmm. and you guys tag team like that, like traditionally? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Jared's the play by play guy, and um, and then I do the the color. Just you know, whenever, for example, if someone gets a dunk, you know, Jared talks about who got the dunk, and I say how it happened or why he got that dunk, and just so the fans can understand. And you know, because a lot of people don't really understand basketball or don't know, and then I got to be the one to break it down and show them why this happened or, it, or you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Or talk about players or player development. Oh, yeah, no, you got to do your homework. Yeah. You got to do your homework. You got to know about some of the players. And this year it was easy for me because I played with a lot of those guys. You know, I, you know I'm only 32, so some of those guys are like 27, 28, mm -hmm. and they was, in, they was maybe rookies or sophomores in the G League whenever I was, you know, in my prime, so I know I know I know a lot of those guys played with a lot of them, so uh, and I know their tendencies, so and I know where they went to school, and I know and I know a bunch about it, so I was able to talk about it and you know run with it. Yeah, you're still connected to them. Still connected to them. And you'll stay connected because you're a part of the Texas Legends organization. You're around here. You're involved, right? Yep. You're woven in still, so you'll stay connected with the players and what's going on around here. Yep. So speaking of the legends, um, I think it's very unique. I've been involved a couple years just on the business side, and I cover them for Lifestyle Frisco, of course. But tell me, describe what you think this legends family means. Is it as unique to you as, as I think it is around here? You know, like it, it's so unique. You know, it's it's and it's open. It, you know, you get the. I talk to some of the whenever I'm out, and someone says, "Hey, did you used to play at the legends or whatever?" and and the way that they, you know, they respond, it's just like they feel like they're part of the legends, you know, like because it, it, it's open, it's open doors, it's mm -hmm. open arms for, for people, especially in Frisco. Mm -hmm. If you if you want to be a part of the legends family, all you got to do is just ask, basically, and you you know, 
and they'll welcome you in with open arms. And the way they take care of their fans, you know, there's there's there hasn't I haven't heard one, you know, negative thing about the Legends, Legends organization, you know, and um, and it and it's because you know the guys get out in the community. Um, yeah. When, whenever they come, whenever, you know, fans come to the Legends games, you know, we treat them like, you know, they're special, they're royalty, and, and, you know, they love it. They respect that. And I don't know. I'm not in other markets and see other teams, but I just don't feel like everybody else does it that way. I feel like we have to do it differently and better here. Well, well you're absolutely right. You know, the Mavs, we're part of the Mavs, and we represent the Mavs, and and that's a big organization over there. And, all the, and there's there's other places that are – you know, that have done a good job. And then there's some places where you're like, ah, not sure I want to be over there. But, you know, to each his own. But I, I know one thing is, you know, the Legends is, is the best organization in the G League for sure. Rewind back to when you were growing up. So tell me about different sports you played. And, you know, I don't think you were always just a basketball player. You mentioned earlier you played baseball. And I know you said you like watching tennis. But tell me about when you were little. What sports were you playing and watching? Well, I've always played basketball, but um, I did play baseball for, you know, youth up until maybe 7th, 8th grade, and then I just I just didn't want to play it anymore. And I was, you know, just wanted to focus strictly on basketball. But I was a decent, I was a decent baseball player. I played shortstop, did some pitching, um, and I played with, uh, you know, one of my guys, his name is Austin Jackson. Uh, he plays. He plays MLB right now. I remember he invited me to play on his AAU team with the. Uh, I think they was called the Reds. They was like big time, ranked in the country for AAU. And he's like, yeah, I got a guy. We we was friends. We was seventh grade. We played basketball together. And I wasn't on their level, not even close. But Can he. Hang with them? No, I mean those guys is like so good. But he's like, yeah, I got a guy, and I mean, and and I played a lot. Like they would play me. And, uh, you know, I strike out here and there I mean, a lot of times, actually. But I got—I remember I got one good hit, <laughs> and the bench went crazy. You know how it is? Well, it's, I was basically like a walk-on, uh-huh. you know. So you know, when, the walk in, when the walk-ons get on in college games, how everybody goes yeah. crazy. Everybody was rooting for me. Everybody was there. rooting for me. I mean, I was just, man. So that was like junior high, you say? Yeah, that was junior high. But, see, my thing was <laughs> – this is not, this might sound crazy, but I didn't want to be that walk on guy. If I was gonna play, I wasn't gonna I wanted to be one of the top guys playing. And I didn't feel like I was good enough, so I was like, I'm good enough at basketball, so I'm gonna just stick with the basketball. Yeah. You wanted to compete. Yeah, I wanted than, to compete. Than being I, the low guy. Yeah, I didn't want to be the, the yeah. It's nah. amazing though, even at seventh grade, the separation of at baseball specifically of how good some of those guys are already getting that early. Those, six of those guys got drafted into the MLB off of that team. Wow. I can't and remember. now is this a Louisville area No, team, uh, I think they was, I think it was, it was, Denton, it was more Denton and, okay. and, and, and those somewhere out there like in this, and also some South Lake kids. But I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was like five or six of those guys got drafted. And Austin got drafted to the Yankees. And he's still playing to wow. this day. So that I'm telling you, like those guys was good. Yeah. Like the ball would be in the in the catcher's mitt, and I was a swinging late. So you shifted over to basketball. So was high school all about basketball for you then? Yeah, that's that's where it took off for me. Um, and that was Louisville. Louisville High right? School. Yeah, that's when it took off. When did you start playing basketball? A little bitty. Yeah, I started playing probably around like. Four or five. Now, when I say playing, I was, you know, shooting hoops. I think I started playing uh, competitive ball when I got to be in the fourth grade, fifth grade. Yeah. So you won the inaugural D-League three-point contest in 2011. Have you always had that three-point shot? Is that something you've always had in middle school, high school? I've always been able to shoot the ball. Um, Because I I would – I would be at the the Louisville Rec Center from 9 a.m. till close till 9 p.m. just shooting, 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 shooting. You know, there's and so you know back then we didn't. You know, it was all about shooting and and dunking. You know, now these kids are so skilled mm-hmm. that they they kind of tend to forget about how important it is to be able to shoot the ball. I'll never forget Dale Harris told me. 
you know, the reason you're he's, – and he's, he's honest with me. You know, he's like, the reason you're still playing the game of basketball is because you're one of the best shooters. You know, he and he told me he's, I'm one of the best shooters he ever coached, and he's coached a lot of NBA players. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, you know, that's, that's that's what he told me. You know, the reason you're playing this game still is because you can shoot the ball. So, you know, and now he – and. I, was, I tell kids today, you know, if you can shoot the ball, you can play forever because your athleticism goes, you know, but. Yeah, slow down. Yeah. So if that's, if you're there because you're shooting the ball, then is he telling you that because there's areas of weakness to go and, and fix? Oh, well, abso absolutely. Yeah. There was, a, you know, my, I was, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't always in the, my, you know, I wasn't always in the best shape that I should have been, uh, so you know, I, my, and my defense wasn't the best as it could. You know, I've, I've, after after you know getting older, I realized you know it's all a want to, mm -hmm. you know, especially on the defensive end. And and uh, I picked it up. I started. I started I once. You know, but I was starting to get older. You know, so you know the chances of a call up was becoming slim. You know, because I'm I'm 26, 27. When I finally realized that you know I got to start mm -hmm. keeping my body intact and. And you got guys that's 21, 22 coming at you. So, coming but, uh, at you, ready to play. Coming at you, hard, ready to play, playing shape. hard and shape, ripped up, cut up. Yeah. Um, but it was, I can't complain about my career playing ball. You know, I've played all over. I've played in every continent, played in G League, met a lot of people, you know, two NBA G League three point contests. So. Oh, two. I only gave you credit for one just now. I didn't know there were two. Yeah, I, went, I was I was back to back. And if we oh. want, and if we want to be honest, if we want to be all the way on, then it was three because oh. they had the uh, South Padre Island Showcase uh, in 2011, and I won that. So is that like the Vegas Showcase now? Or you, yeah, kind of like yeah. that. Kind of like that is now. So, but see, okay. they they took away that. They don't. They didn't have. They don't have the three point contest at the showcase. I'm not even sure they have the All Star Game no more. Think so. I, don't, I feel not like this, year. this season. I thought I maybe it was last season that I'm thinking of, yeah, but I, I thought that I saw that happening still because I feel like Jamil was a part of that this season, still at the break. But I don't know. I could be. I could be. Oh off yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, do you watch the NBA three point and do you get into the, that All Star? Oh break? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that um, you know, the dunks now are so. Repetitive, like you know, you if you've seen one, you've, you've seen a bunch of them. But the three-point contest, you just don't know who's gonna win, and then you can somebody can just get hot, and then yeah. you know. So that's 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 become one of the best ones in the at All Star Weekend I is three-point contest. I used to think, like I think back at my age, I think back to the dunk contest when like it's just one shot, you either make it or you don't, mm. and you know, like Jordan, and it's. It's so intense and exciting when they make it, and it's something big we've never seen before. It's hard now because of all the retries. You know, they get another attempt, they get another attempt, and you know what they're about to do, and you've seen it. It just takes a little bit of the fun out when you've seen that guy. Yeah. Try it, try it again, and then maybe he gets it on the third. You just, I don't get as excited on the third attempt. No, you're, you're right. I, I, can see where you're, I can see where you're coming from, you know. Uh, and when you do it, you know, if you do it on the first try, then... That's great. It's just, and then, yeah, it's that and much they, better. Absolutely, absolutely. I don't want to see the behind-the-scenes attempts to get to that to that one that you make. But, yeah, the three-point contests are great. Um, and the skills this year, it was funny how those guys are shooting their last shot from, like, half court now. And yeah. more than one are going in. The, like I told you, they're so skilled nowadays. Like, and, you, and the way and yeah and the skills challenge like some of mm -hmm. those passes that they make or the way they get between those you know cones you know these guys is unbelievable it is it's awesome to watch do you ever watch the hockey skills challenge i haven't seen oh. that watch it next well i mean we're it'll be a while but um next hockey all-star break just watch it because it's that same skills and um like fastest shot and then the Accuracy of shots and their puck has to go in certain corners of the goal. It's it's pretty oh, you amazing know what? I think to I watch might have them seen a little. That. I think I might have seen like clips of it on like Sports Center or something. Probably because uh, when it's yeah when they break records and I mean hardest shot and all these it's it's amazing. 
All right, so speaking of skills, so what else are you, have you been doing with your basketball skills and experiences um, besides the in-season um, commentating for the Legends? Well, no, oh, well, so I, I started a basketball training academy We're in Louisville. And, you know, I have, you know, I got some of the, I got some kids that are top-level kids in the, in the state and the country. You know, there's a kid, um, you know, Keontae George at Louisville. You know, he just made uh, ESPN's top 25 at number 24 in the country. Wow. You know, um, got another kid. Uh, he's actually just went to Utah. His name's Caleb Lohner. Uh, you know, uh, K.J. Pruitt at Louisville, Ben, Ben Jolson in, in Colleyville. So I got, there's a lot of talent. But then I also have kids that just want to learn how to play and want to be those guys, you know. Yeah. And so those guys, the first few names you mentioned, are these, you say go to Utah, like going for college ball or... Like, are these high school players? No, yeah, these are high school players. Ka uh, Caleb Lohner went, he was at Flower Mound High School, then he went to uh, prep school in Utah. Okay. You know, he um, there's a better opportunity for him out there, so he, so he chose to go out there. But but you're working with kids of all ages, like like even like elementary age kids that are just starting? I got, uh, yeah, we start from, we go fifth grade on up, you know, I got... I got a we got a decent amount of kids, you know. It's uh it's fun. So there's and you know what's the good funny part is is watching them how they had never been able to make a layup mm -hmm. and now they're you know making them consistently or not knowing anything about the game of basketball and then now they're just you know it's going smooth for yeah. them. So you know that, I get a joy out of that. You know we get in there we go to work and the kids that want to be there. You know, always welcome to come. So, what does that look like? Like, how often are you working with these kids? Right now, it's it's a everyday thing. We go Monday through Monday. You know, uh, some days are different. We, uh, I have like a certain group come in on a Monday. Like for example, today we have uh, some of the top some of the top kids coming in. Some of my elite kids. You know, we might have a couple guys that are play pro. For uh, Diamante Simmons, he played in Denmark. Um, you know, so we got we got a couple pros that stop by and come work out with the kids, and they love it. You know, yeah. the little kids get to see, dang, you know, look how big these guys right. are, how hard they work. I want to be like that, so it gives them a little, you know, a little joy in there. That's great that you still or that you're working with kiddos, and this all happens in Louisville. Yep, it's in Louisville. Um, it's called the Age Don't Matter Basketball Training Academy. Oh, I yeah. love that. That's great. So you're still playing every day then. Like, I'm not necessarily playing every day. You know, before they get there, I might shoot a few hoops or, you know. keep but, that shot going. Yeah, to keep the shot going. But uh, other than that, I just I just sit, I just train, you know, just train Barking them. Barking orders. Yep, just help them get better. Barking at them, telling them. Definitely go bark at them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I get a, you know, so you pick up so much knowledge from playing from coaches all over. Like, play, the coach that I played for in Venezuela is totally different than the coach that I played for in Lebanon. How so? Like, training-wise, just regimen, just how they speak to you, what they expect of you, everything? Just, I mean, just, yeah, you're, you're right. Like, how they speak to you, how they teach you, how um, some of the stuff that they, they like and that they don't like. And then playing, you know, the coach in Lebanon was totally different than the coach... Dale Harris mm -hmm. that I played for. You know, uh, I played for Coach Dana Altman. He's totally different from the coach in Columbia where I play. So you know, you just, and you you pick up some good you pick up some good information from all those coaches. Sure. You know, so You're and, I, that along. and I get to pass it along and show these. So what's kids. your best? I mean, what do you think is the most effective style of a coach? You've seen all those different styles. Um, what are some of the best pieces that you've pulled? You you um. You know, every coach that I had uh, from starting in high school, uh, you know, you got to you gotta be, a, as being a coach, you got to get on your players. Like, even if they're their top kids, it mm -hmm. does not matter. Like, you you know, because, you know, some, sometimes it happens to where, you know, I'm, I don't know about the, the NBA or, you know, these guys are so ahead of, you know. But, you know, high school, middle school, college, 
you got to get on you got to get on your top guys and you got to treat everybody the same you know and, and the reason is is because the guys they're all they they look they watching mm-hmm. you, at the end of the day they're watching you know he he does you know this guy always is you know late and nobody says anything to him or this guy is always you know shooting all the shots and every time I shoot a shot he gets on me so yeah, it you get, brings everybody else down. I feel like, and that and that. that and that can hurt a locker room, mm-hmm. you know. And so that's one of the things I've learned is that everybody has to be the same. You got to treat everybody the same when it comes to the game of basketball. Because if you don't, then you lose people throughout the journey. And I would think if you're pulling the best, if you're pulling more out of the best players, that's only going to bring up everybody else up Absol- to a higher level. Absolutely. Right? Who uh, do you have a favorite coach? <laughs> there was, I, I would have to say, you know, pro or college. I don't know. Could be your seventh grade coach. I don't know. Just anybody that you think about the most when you when you draw back on on experiences and and just the game and the skills that you have or the love that you have, whatever it is. I mean, is there just an, a coach or two that you just always go back to, remembering that they taught you a lot? You know, the, um, well, I'd have to say, because I went to junior college for two years before I transferred to mm-hmm. Creighton, and Coach Scott Grenander taught me so much. Because that's, you know, when you go to junior college, you're in there with guys that, <laughs> you're in there with a bunch of animals, to be honest with you. You know, you got some guys that just got out of jail, or you with some guys that, you know, 27, 28 years of age. Yeah. And and I'm going in there at 18, and you know, and he taught me so much as far as you know, being on time, you know, because if you're not, then these older older guys that get your minutes or just and I didn't, it didn't matter that I was that I was one of the top kids coming out of out of Texas because when you get to college, everybody's good or better, mm-hmm. and uh, and he you know he just kept my head on straight, and. And, you know, that's I became a man in there. Because that probably could have been a make or break, or that probably was a make or break few years. Because, like, if you wouldn't have gotten your head on straight and grown up during that, that it'd have been over. Juco time, like, you'd have been done. Yeah, it'd have been over. It'd have been over. And, and, that, and that happens a lot nowadays is, you know, you see, you see so many kids that are, that are ranked in the country or just – get all this publicity at an early age and then whenever it gets serious and now you're about to go to college uh, we got home um, they they can't take that pressure and they transfer then they transfer again then they transfer again and before you know it nobody even knows where they're at you know no consistency no consistency yeah well I'm glad you got your head on straight yeah glad yeah. you you got it back here back home and you're mm-hmm. here in Frisco working with the legend and um so we'll be listening for you next season. Yeah, I'll be here. Thank you for the time today. No problem. Thanks for having me.